So the first type I'm going to talk about is called BPVV, which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And it's benign, so that's good news. It seems very scary to a patient that has it because they'll, you know, they'll lie down on their back and all of a sudden the room will start to spin around them uh, and they'll feel extreme dizziness vertigo uh, for a period of about 30 seconds. Oftentimes the patients will, out of fear, pull themselves out of that position before they allow that dampening effect to occur. And now what causes BPV? Well, there's these little crystals inside your ears, um, in the vestibular apparatus within your ears. And that's, you have these semicircular canals um, in each side and there's fluid in there that when you rotate, it stimulates hair cells to tell your brain where you're moving. So if I'm moving to the right or the left or looking up or down, that fluid will stimulate the hair cells to let my brain know where I am in space. What happens or what can happen following concussion, or it can just happen out of the blue for no particular reason, is you have little little crystals that are in one of the components of your inner ear that will be dislodged. And when those crystals get dislodged into those semicircular canals, if you go into a certain position, mostly it's it's lying down right on your back or laying on one side or the other, it will rest, the crystal will come to rest on a hair cell and that will give you the sensation that you are continuously spinning. So normally the fluid just brushes by these hair cells and makes you feel like you're spinning for a period of time, like a very, as it's happening. But if the crystal comes to rest on these hair cells, it'll give you the sensation that you are still spinning. And then the room will start to spin around you. Some patients will become nauseous and sick, but that actually will diminish over the next 30 seconds. And if you change positions, well, the crystal will move again. It'll start stimulating that hair cell and then it will tire it out and it'll fatigue it. And all of a sudden you'll start to feel less dizzy again. So this, this is actually quite easy to treat. If you find a therapist that is, you kind of has training in vestibular therapy, they can easily treat this, um, you know, in a matter of minutes by just putting you through um, a technique called the Epley's repositioning maneuver. There's also the barbecue roll, depending on which canal the, the crystal is in, um, it's quite easy to treat. The other things you have to be concerned about when you have um, vertigo, and it's particularly when it's not related to the position you're in. So if you have vertigo that only comes on in certain positions, this is an easy thing to fix. Find a vestibular therapist, get to them right away. Uh, they can easily help you out with this. The other ones, if it's more continuous, you have to be concerned with uh, vestibular neuritis, which is inflammation of the vestibular nerve, which also can look a lot like labyrinthitis, which is basically vestibular neuritis with a hearing component to it because it affects both parts of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Um, the one that you have to be concerned with here, though, is also a stroke. So cerebellar stroke can cause continuous vertigo, even in an upright position, um, that is just constantly continuous and you'll get basically nystagmus um, that is um, triggered by just basic eye motion or just spontaneous nystagmus that can just occur uh, for no particular reason and you have this continuous vertigo state which is quite debilitating. Um, these can be kind of ruled in or out with uh, a simple clinical exam called the Hintz maneuver which will look at uh, tests of skew as well as head impulses and depending on what, what the practitioner finds with these particular uh, tests can determine what the cause is, whether it's a more serious or a you know benign uh, disorder that you're currently experiencing. So the first thing with any of this stuff is find a trained healthcare practitioner. If this is following um, concussion, then you might want to find somebody with specific concussion training as well, because they'll be able to figure out some of the other nuances that go along with this. Mm -hmm.